Hello everyone, Pazu here. Welcome back to Memento Morty 2. So the Madison, where is it? Is it inside uh, the trailer? The trailer is locked. They probably use it for all the tasks which need a warm, light, and quiet place. A locked door, but uh, what about the window here? A jar window. The window is fastened to a fixture, which only allows it to open a bit. Schneider probably forgot to close it, but the gap is too small for me to put my hand through. No, that won't budge. Hmm... Um... Oh, there's a bolt and a window latch over here. There's a bolt in the window fixture that doesn't allow it to open more. Can we remove the bolt? I can't unhook it that way. The bolt holds it too firm. The bolt holds the window fixture. Okay, we need some kind of wrench or a screwdriver. Um, well actually, can I use this stripping knife to pry out that bow? The stripping knife is made of quality material and carries the Argo logo. Um, oh, use it like a screwdriver. <laughs> the window is not held by anything and now it's hanging loose. All right, Good, there we go. I can look around properly at last. Oh, I don't see any medicine around. I hope Schneider hasn't left his pills somewhere in that mess. I have no intention of starting to clean here and getting myself caught by the guard. Scatter notes. There are notes about some repairs. Bills, orders... I don't see anything interesting here. Oh, and tomb. Der Kreuter. Maybe something about teas? <laughs> There are the remains of some oddly smelling tea at the bottom of this cup. Smelly tea. How appetizing. This book's named Geheimnis Fresken. And what a surprise, it was written by Professor Klaus Schneider. <laughs> so he wrote this, huh? Schneider's photo is on the cover. Wow, that's really something. Oh, wait, here's a bottle. Medicine bottle. These have to be Schneider's pills. It looks like I've found Schneider's medicine. I should go back to the hotel and give it to him. Alright, there we go. <laughs> so, antacids. The antacids were made by some German company. There's a little tag reading K. Schneider. Hmm, so they are prescription bottles. I mean, a prescription pills, not bottles. Um, and the book? Schneider and his titles. The photo occupies almost the whole cover. He's probably quite a celebrity in his field. And... Restoration scheme. It's some plan describing a fresco restoration. It seems that the professor made some notes outside his regular work. Huh, so some kind of formulas? And diagrams? It contains an article on restoring frescoes in old interiors generally. Regrettably, it's in German, and I can only say, where's the toilet in that language. But judging by the denseness of the text, Schneider is quite hard on his readers. Hmm. Okay. We got a medicine, so let's go back to the motel. To the inn. Nice, we sneak right by. <laughs> now I just have to come up with some clever story about how I got those pills. I can't just say I broke in to get them. I hope it'll be good for something because it really wasn't a pleasant trip. Okay, Professor, we have your pills. Professor Schneider suffers from a stomach ache, and I'd say the tea he's drinking isn't exactly helping. Professor? Yeah? 
Professor, is this your medicine? Das ist erstaunlich, Madame Leroy. Where did you find it? I thought I left it in the monastery. Where well, we found it? Uh, the medicine was in truth. The medicine was in bluff. <laughs> bluff. Uh, yeah, let's do a bluff. In the end, they were in the lobby. Yes. <laughs> in, in the lobby. Really? Lying under the couch. I used to sit there, true, but anyway, I thought that I left him at the monastery. Well, I have them. That's, that's what counts. Thank you very much. I owe you a favor. Okay, so, um, let's do, wait, search Yazak's room? I don't think we should tell him that. Uh, let's just say we need a room for the night. Yes. Professor, it's a bit awkward, but you said you're much obliged to me. May I ask something of you? Sure, go on. All the rooms are taken by your company. Couldn't I stay in one of them tonight? Perhaps Yatsek's room. He hasn't returned yet anyway. Oh, I'm sorry, but, but I can't do that. Even if Hari told you something else, I have to abide by the same contract as him. I can't do it. The rooms are only for employees and associates of Argo. No one else can use them. Uh, yeah, prove my knowledge. Professor, I have an idea. You said that the rooms may be used only by professionals working for Argo, right? Yes. So what if I worked for you for a while? Only a very short contract, sort of a consultant. Oh, Madame Leroy, it is an interesting idea, but an unfeasible one. Argo cooperates only with true professionals, only with the best in their field. Mm. Believe me, I'd like to help you, but next to accept a new team member without sufficient experience <laughs> would be a little embarrassing. Uh, test knowledge, word test. Oh boy, you know what? I think this has something to do with that note. The procedure in restoring the fresco. Um, yeah, I think I need to go back out and have a look at that note and probably write something down. <laughs> Goodbye, Professor. Okay, so let's take a look at the documents. Um, we are looking for that restoration. Yeah, the scheme, restoration scheme. So, a bunch of formulas and figure two. The innermost layer is A, Aresio, then Sinopia, Intonaco, and Fresco. Or A Fresco. Okay, and now Aresio, the basic underlayer consisting of lime plaster, it is coarse and is applied directly to the wall. Before applying the next layer, it has to settle for at least 24 hours. You know what, I think I need to write this down. There's all the steps. So, Arisio is the innermost layer. Okay, and um, after applying the layer, it has to wait 24 hours. Okay. And when using the Cal's Florentine, masters wait for a much, much longer time. One fresco, a fresco. The true fresco, it has to be painted on an intonaco layer when still wet. Wait, intonaco? What about S? What about Sinopia? Uh, painted on intonaco layer when still wet. The timing is fundamental. Draw a plotted line for the second release. Fresco Seco. I have written enough about frescoes painted on a dry surface in the first edition. This technique doesn't deserve more tax. Intonaco, the very last layer of lime plaster to be applied. Huh. And many artists forget to smooth it out using a wood derby float. Uh huh. So this layer, I have to use a wood derby. Intonaco one. And, um. Momento di auto, the right time for the painting of the fresco. Usually it occurs between 1 and 2 hours after applying the intonaco. After 2 hours, the carbonization starts and intonaco slowly turns unusable for painting. So maximum wait time is 2 hours. And... Oh, here is the Sinopia. So the second layer. Uh, the old method of transferring a template. Hmm. 
A red pigment called Synopia is applied onto the residual layer. So we'll apply directly onto the first, uh, I mean the innermost layer, using a template. And currently the Sporvero method, method is used more often. And a nice story about Michelangelo and the brush made from gold hair, so readers have some fun. But I have to emphasize the Sinopia pigment more strongly than in the current book. So lime plaster, a base of both Arisio and Tunaco. Um, it must settle for at least two weeks during the preparation to properly swell. So before all this happened, I have to prepare the lime plaster ahead of time. And it has to be settled for two weeks. So it is another step requiring the correct timing. So figure one is this enough to illustrate the plaster making process and its subsequent carbonization on the wall. Huh. And figure two have Agnes scan the drawing. Note to get copyright for several photos of Buon fresco from Pompeii. They perfectly illustrate the incredible durability of the frescoes. So after the plaster, I mean after applying the plaster, is a process of carbonization. I assume with carbon dioxide in the air. So, um, okay. You know what? Um, I think I should take pictures <laughs> on these two pages there. I mean, three pages, just in case. Okay, hold on. Let me use my phone. <laughs> I don't want to go back to this. So, Fisa and a bunch of formulas. Um. Okay, and this one. All right. I think we are ready for the test. <laughs> Here we go. Professor. Yeah. So test me. I'll prove that I have the knowledge needed for you to hire me for a short time. Well, all right. I'll try not to be unduly hard on you. Uh, we may try my favorite test. I use it with my students at the university. If you really are interested in renovation, as you suggested before, it should be a piece of cake for you to pass the test. If you succeed, I'll admit that you could be an asset to us, and I will let you use the room. So, a good restorer has to know not only the processes of the restoration itself, but also the exact technological procedures used to create the artwork. It helps you to understand everything in a more complex way and helps to avoid lots of common mistakes. <clears throat> Madame Leroy, how would you proceed when making a fresco? I mean the classic ones, of course, the ones called warm fresco. Uh, what steps would you take and in what order? Okay, so the first step it is going to be prepare the lime plaster, yes. It's very important to properly prepare the lime plaster. Thanks to it, frescoes may remain in good condition even for several thousand years. Okay, this we have to wait for two weeks, so 14 days. I would let it sit for at least 14 days to let the processes inside the materials process correctly. And now, um, it is time to apply the Arisio layer. I would apply a thicker Arisio layer. It would have excellent adhesion. And then we have to wait for one day. I'd let it all settle for at least one day. So now we can transfer the template onto the wall. I would transfer the template onto the wall. Either I'd use the old method using a red pigment called Sinopia, or I'll use the pouch of carbon black called Spolvero on the perforated paper template. Mm, great, Madame Leroy. I see you know even the less known methods. Yes. Mm, and what would you do next? And uh, next? Um, so the next layer is Intonaco layer. I'd apply the Intonaco layer. 
I must not put it on the wall in greater amounts than I can use during one painting session. Uh huh. And we have to smooth it out with a wooden stake, wood derby. I have to smooth out the surface very precisely using a special wood derby float. Many painters forget that, and so the result of their work isn't exactly dazzling, even if they don't make any other mistake. Okay. Um, we have all three layers now. So um, we have to wait for the memento di Otto. The fresco painting requires very careful planning. Only during the momento d'oro is it possible to paint in such a way that the fresco will last and be of high quality. And when does that momento d'oro occur? Best is between one and two hours. Before that time, the underlying layers are too soft, and after two hours, they become too dry and do not absorb properly. Um, I think it's time to paint the fresco. Yes. Now the time comes at last to paint the fresco. Special water-soluble paints are used for that. And the last step: carbon dioxide. Warm frescoes don't dry in the classic way. Instead, the process of surface carbonization takes place, which is why frescoes are so incredibly durable. Hmm, Zergut. Eventually, you answered correctly. Good work.